Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the MG Midget. So those of you who are regulars to the channel will know that in part one of this series uh, we collected uh, the car from uh, Moss Vale in the Southern Highlands and we were just about to embark on our journey, our first real journey, uh, back to Sydney. And uh, I have to say that things on that journey didn't go quite as we'd hoped. So sit back and enjoy part two of the collection story of this MG Midget. We're not a great start. It's raining. <laughs> These cars are not designed for rain. And now it's steaming up inside. I think there might be demist somehow. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> oh geez. Let's hope that water doesn't get into the electrics. That's the worst that could happen. Windscreen wipers are so hopeless. And look, I'm all steamed up as well. <sighs> oh well. I guess it can't get any worse than this. Famous last words until it breaks down, I guess. Hopefully that'll be the last of the rain. It's still spitting, it's still annoying and interesting. Anyway, nothing we can do, just have to keep going. It drives really sweetly yes. though. I mean, it's the engine sounds fantastic, it's the gearbox is nice and precise, the steering is good. The only thing is a little bit dodgy are the brakes. You have to push them hard to get any kind of kind of response out of the brakes. But that's just I don't know whether that's normal or whether it might need some adjustment. But hey, that's for another day. That's for another day. Just enjoy it for the time being. Enjoy this crazy little fun go kart thing. It doesn't look like the door locks work either because I tried because I locked the doors from the inside and then I couldn't get in. So maybe it's probably wise just to leave the doors open. It's not a secure place to be, that's for sure. Ah, that's better. Now the rain stopped, I feel better. So anyway, the, the journey home is going to be pretty boring on the freeway, so once we get going. I'll catch you again when we get home. Unless anything interesting happens on the way home. Which I hope it doesn't, by the way. One hour later. <laughs> so we managed to stall the engine. And then it wouldn't start again. The battery, either the battery is flat or it's not charging or something. So, fortunately there was a guy right behind me who had a set of jump leads. And I was able to start it, jump start it from the guy. But yeah, something is not right. It's not cranking, not enough cranking power in the battery. So I'm just gonna sit on the freeway now. I was gonna go down the little um, like back roads to go home, but not now. Just gonna sit on the freeway and um, Get a fresh, get a new battery ASAP. I knew it couldn't be, I knew there had to be something go wrong, so just sit on the yeah, it looks like it's charging, but not very much. Ah, the joys of classic. British car ownership. Oh well. Let's hope we get home okay. One hour later. So as if this journey couldn't get any worse, there was a breakdown 
breakdown on the eastern distributor here in Sydney which is the main kind of freeway through the city and yeah so now I've had to take a another route through the city in order to try and get avoid the traffic because I didn't want to go through a tunnel um, with the risk of this stalling and stop start traffic ah what a great introduction to classic British sports car ownership this has been so far I mean the car runs beautifully actually it really drives well but two things that this car doesn't do well, rain and freeways. So I was driving home on a freeway in the rain. Brilliant. Anyway, I think we're... onto some clearer roads now. Um, but, yeah, I don't know what's happening with the battery. Not far to go, so hopefully, touch wood, everything will be okay. So it's the next day. You join me in the midget with the top down, enjoying some autumn sunshine in Sydney. So the first thing I did when I got home was I went out and got a, a new battery. And when I actually checked the size of the battery that they recommend, the one that was in there was actually a bit small in terms of capacity. So, so look, I don't know whether that's anything to do with it, but I think it's always a good idea just to have a, a new battery installed so that you don't end up having issues like I had yesterday. I'll keep an eye on the condition of the battery. If it seems like it's not charging for any reason, then Obviously that's another issue that I'll have to look at. You know, uh, maybe the dynamo or the alternator is not charging properly. Um, so yeah, we'll just see how it goes. This morning I was miraculously able to fix one of the first issues on the car myself, which was rather impressive, I thought. Um, so neither of the door locks work from the outside using the key. Well, actually that's not strictly too true. It's quite dangerous, or it was quite dangerous because you were able to lock it from the outside and then it wouldn't unlock again. So on the driver's side, I took the door card off and I could see that there was a little fork on the lock. It's like a, like a fork, which a little um, rod needs to slot into. That rod had been misplaced and not was no longer seated in that in that fork so as soon as I was able to just just loosen the components so I could wiggle it back in and then um, yeah the driver's door now will lock and unlock from the outside which is good I'll do the same on the passenger door it's probably the same issue that's what I love about this car it is so easy just to do little bits and pieces and you don't feel that you're gonna break something and you're gonna damage the car or you know it's not it's not like it's a, a wildly expensive car which is you know you're, you're scared of doing anything in case you break it um, this is really just you know it's not it's not nothing but compared to the value of the Ferrari clearly it's it's a lot less expensive a lot less valuable and you know, the stakes aren't as high if you bodge something up. These kind of back streets are just the perfect kind of place for this kind of car, just pootling around the back streets. It's just gorgeous. Whoa, look at that view. Harbour Bridge, how about that? So yeah, getting the fuel sender done will be the next thing. Um, I'm not sure how easy or difficult it is to get into that. I've got the workshop manual. I've actually got the original workshop manual that came with the car, um, but I've also got a PDF version, which is probably going to be a little bit more um, practical to use. Um, so we'll see how 
easy or difficult it is to get into the fuel sender unit and replace that. But yeah, that's kind of it for this first video on the MG Midget. Um, loving the open top motoring experience in this little British sports car, so much fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the collection video. Uh, Keith was such a gentleman and uh, I feel privileged to be um, the second owner of the car that he bought from you in 1970. I'm not sure I'll keep it for another 50 years, I don't think I'll live that long. Um, but I'm going to have a lot of fun uh, with this car. It's uh, already proved itself to be a little bundle of fun. And uh, yeah, lots of things we can do uh, going forward on the channel. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like. It'd be great to have you as a subscriber and hit that notification bell. You can follow me on Instagram down here. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.